perfect. Who'd want to be with this? And no, you don't deserve this. You're worth what is worthless. Like shame. Feel so exhausted. Holding your hair back, you're digging your nails and you're cursing my name. Fantastic. That is Bowen. Hey, everybody. It's Mike from the Mike Wagner Show. Powered by Sound Equip Studios. Visit online at soundequipstudios.com for all your needs. Look at a professional website without breaking your budget. Sound Equip Studios is the answer. Sound Equip Studios offers fast, affordable custom web designs that blow the competition away. Call today, 1-800-303-3960. That's 1-800-303-3960. Or email to support at soundequipstudios.com. Mention the Mike Wagner Show. Get 20% off your first project. Sound Web Studios. Take your image to the next level. Also, the Mike Widener Show can be heard on the MikeWidenerShow.com. You can check our Facebook page at Facebook.com slash the Mike Widener Show. You can download and listen on Facebook, SoundCloud, Spreaker, Spotify, and iHeartRadio. Also on Anchor FM, Radio Public, iTunes, Google Play, and over 25 podcast platforms. Take the Mike Widener Show with you on any mobile device. Subscribe to the Mike Widener Show on the YouTube channel. Also follow the Mike Widener Show on Instagram and Twitter today. We're here with a wonderful gentleman based in beautiful downtown Los Angeles. He just played No Filter from the Perpetual Heartbreak release and perpetual indeed and perpetual does he was just absolutely fantastic and he's got a great story that tells he's a visual artist since childhood a former lead singer of ming and ping he does exhibits in los angeles new york houston miami he's got a science degree in environmental design from the art center college of design and he just has a great story to tell and live ladies and gentlemen from his beautiful plush studio in downtown los angeles ladies and gentlemen the very super and ultra Uber creative talented Bao Bo. Bao, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Thanks for joining us today. What an intro. Thank you so much. <laughs> oh, you just play with passion that one with no filter from Perpetual Heartbreak. And you've been a visual artist since childhood. You've been a musician for quite a while. You were yeah. the former lead singer of Ming and Ping. You got exhibits in um LA, New York City, Houston, Miami, and a science degree in environmental design. And you just have just an amazing collection. And before we get into all that, tell us how you first got started. Um, I was a kid. <laughs> I was born. 
Uh, I've been a visual artist all of my life, pretty much. And um, I think the thing about me as a musician is that I've been straddling those two worlds for as long as I can remember. And um, I went to art school and dropped out, got really depressed. <laughs> and that's when I started a band called Ning and Ping, which is um, like synth pop, electronic pop music, uh, very 80s inspired. <clears throat> And um, that caught on, so which gave me a few opportunities to have my music showcased on, um, you know, promotional advertisements for a few brands, and it allowed me to play with a lot of really cool other artists and, you know, tour parts of the country I would have not been able to see otherwise. I mean, you know, uh, while doing music. And um, during this entire time, I've been a design creative director for a couple of design agencies in marketing and technology. Um, and so, like I said, I've been straddling those two worlds, but uh, this year I'm going full time into music and I'm very grateful for you to give me a chance to show off the music. And it's amazing to have you on as well. And my question is, you talk about straddling between um, design and music and how do you manage to keep the two together? And are there any thoughts of combining the two into what you're doing into one career, design and music, and make it into one. Any thought, any possibility on that? Yeah, absolutely. That's what I plan on doing uh, starting now. And um, <clears throat> I'll also be creating a lot of content on, on YouTube and um, other medium that is uh, visually based. And so uh, it'll give me a chance to exercise my musical skills as well as, you know, creating artwork and uh, designing the merchandise for the music and um, any of the video stuff that we end up doing. What I really want to do though, Mike, is to talk to people like me who straddle both worlds, visual and, and musical arts, and um, maybe show them a little bit of how I approach music using the language and the vocabulary of a visual artist. And I think there's so many people like me, but there's not that much content for them. Mm -hmm. it, it sounds like a brand new genre that's um, that that's uh, about to come out, and you appear to be one of the first. And and of course, I have to say, it just sounds very amazing. And what was that one moment that precisely influenced you into uh, doing music and also going into music full time? So what was that one precise moment that says, hey, I'm going to do music? Um, it's kind of a pretty hardcore story. Um, I had toured with Ming and Ping for a, a few years. And um, one day I got, uh, I was kind of at the end of my agency career, you know, kind of getting burned out on that whole thing. And I got an email from a random fan, I guess, and they told me that um, one of, a fan emailed and said his best friend had passed away in um, one of the fires in Prescott, Arizona. And he was a, um, an elite firefighter who tried to battle um, the fire there, and he, he passed away along with, I think, 12 other firefighters. And what he told me was that Ming and Ping's music defined an entire summer for them and, like, you know, a lot of their childhood growing up together. And I realized almost every memory that I have has some kind of soundtrack tied to it, right? An entire high school career or, you know, uh, various meaningful relationships and friendships has some kind of soundtrack tied to it. And I, I realized how immediate and profound the connection is between music and somebody's life. Something that I wasn't able to do in my visual arts career because a lot of times it requires like kind of some training and some vocabulary to understand visual art. Um, but music, you just hear it at the grocery store and you feel it right away. Mm -hmm. and, and it sounds like the, uh, the thing with Ming and Ping is pretty much based on your life story from childhood up to now and perpetual heartbreak. It, it almost sounds like the same thing, like with uh, Ming and Ping and maybe you can just uh, tell us a bit more about perpetual heartbreak. Yeah. So my upcoming album, uh, it's coming out on October 9th called perpetual heartbreak. Um, and I decided to go with that theme for my album because, you know, 2020 and a couple of years leading up to 2020 have been um, an emotional barrage, I guess, 
<laughs> and um, I wrote a few new songs, and one of them had a lyric that said perpetual heartbreak. You know, um, and I was like, God, that's such a powerful image. Like, you're feeling so hard over and over and over. And that's okay. I want to encourage people to do that and not, you know, hide from those feelings. Um, and so that inspired me to pull up a few older songs and uh, demo songs that I had already written and kind of produce them to all fit together. Uh, so Perpetual Heartbreak as a, uh, the end result was sort of this surreal collage of emotional dreamlike images uh, into this one collection of songs that are, are extremely personal to me. And, um, you know, they touch on a few topics that I really care about, which interpersonal relationships, mental health, and um, I always return to the idea of personal identity and cultural identity. Mm -hmm. uh, growing up as a um, Asian American immigrant, a Vietnamese American immigrant, um, I've always had those things uh, encountered in my life, and, and they mean a lot to me. And so um, quite a few of the songs touch on those topics. Mm -hmm. And what are some of the topics you touch on in your album? Um, definitely that idea of kind of being an outsider and not clearly having your identity um, defined in a normal way. Uh, for, I think for a lot of us who grow in this, grow up in this country, uh, the United States, as an immigrant, um, the culture is not, was not designed for us, right? Uh, for example, Mike, when I introduce myself to um, certain people, I say my name is Bao. When I think of my name in my brain, it's Bao, and it has that question mark sound, and that's a Vietnamese accent that completely changes the meaning of the word. Okay. And so having to sacrifice that bow sound as a child to uh, say my teachers, just to make it easier for them to, to call on me during class or whatever, um, I didn't realize how big of an effect those, those tiny things had on my life until I was a little older. And um, so I touch on that idea of like, you know, having to negotiate your identity and your culture with your surrounding environment quite a bit in, in these songs. Mm -hmm. um, no filter I just played you uh, touches on some really sensitive topics with you know me formerly being in a relationship that I eventually realized was you know uh, unhealthy and abusive and um, I was just reflecting on how confusing and such a milestone uh, during that that uh, experience and you really can't see clearly until you make a lot of effort to pull yourself out of that so mm -hmm. It's kind of, how would you say, it, it, it's heavy stuff. <laughs> it, it, it does sound pretty heavy, and I was going to ask you as well, too, you touched upon um, your Vietnamese upbringing. Now, 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 when did you guys immigrate uh, to the United States from uh, the Vietnamese area? We came in the mid-80s, and my mother and her, four, her five children, I'm the youngest of five. And uh, so she raised us as a single parent, she went through the entire immigration process as a single parent. And so um, she definitely is the biggest inspiration in my life. And uh, whatever story I have to tell, I really do owe it to her strength and tenacity and courage. Mm -hmm. And also um, growing up in the Vietnamese area before coming to the States, what was it like for you growing up before coming to the States? That's a really great question. Like, um, I have a song on the album called Far Away. and it talks about how my memories and my experience as a Vietnamese person um, is kind of reconstructed from storytelling and um, images that I, you know, created based on um, secondhand knowledge mostly. Because growing up as a child in Vietnam, I think I was too young to um, have firsthand memories then. And even if I did, I don't really know whether those are real mm -hmm. memories or not. So um, to recount kind of experience of, of um, your identity being 
kind of secondhand, um, second person, I guess, uh, stories and kind of reconstructing. It feels dreamlike, you know. It, it, I know a lot of people have very concrete memories of their childhood, and I don't. Um, mm. Stories from your parents or your elders, like all of those things make up my personal history. Um, and then for me, I, I feel like I'm an American American, like purely. Mm -hmm. Uh huh. And, and, and it sounds like um, your story pretty much resonates with a lot of people trying to fit in with today's society and everything else. And do you think uh, social media also makes it easier for people to relate or to get along, or is it becoming, or is it the same, or is it uh, more difficult? Wow, that is an excellent question. I think it gives everybody more opportunities to share their perspectives. And, you know, if you hear stories about people, celebrities, it also opens up all of the channels to get bombarded with all sorts of opinions, like unsolicited <laughs> opinions. <laughs> and so um, I'm really grateful that, and I encourage, you know, people like me to share their stories in an unvarnished way. Um, but also be ready for the reaction and be ready to kind of field those questions. But the big thing to remember, I think, is that we're all kind of jumping into this experience without prior experience. So everything's new and how you react, you're still learning to react to uh, bullies online or um, really rabid, fanatic uh, people who love your work or your story. And so to navigate that whole process is, I think, brand new to everyone. So um, take it easy on yourself, I think. Mm -hmm. And that's a very good point, too. We'll talk more of about uh, perpetual heartbreak with Bao Bo. But first, listen to The Mike Wagner Show at themikewagnershow.com, powered by Sonic Web Studios. Visit online at sonicwebstudios.com for all your needs. Look at a professional website without breaking your budget. Sonic Web Studios is the answer. Sonic Web Studios offers fast, affordable custom web designs that blow the competition away. Call today, 1-800-303-3960. That's 1-800-303-3960. Or email to support at sonicwebstudios.com. Mention the Mike Wagner Show. Get 20% off your first project. Sonic Web Studios. Take your image to the next level. Also, The Mike Widener Show can be heard on the themikewidenershow.com. You can check our Facebook page at facebook.com slash Show. You can download and listen on Facebook, SoundCloud, Spreaker, Spotify, and iHeartRadio. Also on Anchor FM, Radio Public, iTunes, Google Play, and for 25 podcast platforms. Take The Mike Widener Show with you on any mobile device. Subscribe to The Mike Widener Show on the YouTube channel. Also follow The Mike Widener Show on Instagram and Twitter today. We're here with singer, songwriter, very talented, Bob Bo here on The Mike Widener Show. And now that he's... Um, a multi-talented uh, singer-songwriter. He is also um, a, a visual artist since childhood and working on, um, you know, putting the two together to make a very unique genre. Before we talk about more about your perpetual heartbreak and also a little bit about your visual arts career, who are some of your favorite um, artists, singers, and musicians growing up? My absolute musical idol is probably Prince. <laughs> He's uh, <laughs> the most diverse virtuoso as far as musicianship, but what I really admire is um, how vulnerable his creative product is. Um, he really puts himself, you know, whether it be a fictional story or whatever, he acts out the emotion, and sometimes you really feel like he's really pouring his heart out into that stuff. And uh -huh. so, um, you know, that alone, combined with his broad range of like styles and, and instrumentation, I, I just really admire Prince quite a bit. And um, you could probably hear that in a lot of my music. <laughs> oh, yes. And I think you've got the potential to do that. And who are some of your favorite um, artists and musicians growing up and also some of your major influences? Um, I think most recently I've been really enamored with Anthony Bourdain. Um, when I watch his show, I sense pure humanity. I see him engaging humans on, you know, a very personal and honest level. And uh, if you didn't watch the show and pay attention to it, you would just think it's a food and travel show, right? But I, I feel like creatively, uh, he's one of the most um, impactful artists or creatives in my lifetime. And I really admire the impact that he's had on people being able to open up their hearts to other cultures and open up their minds to other uh, types of people. 
Mm-hmm. And, and it sounds like what you're looking for these days and the message you're trying to get out. And it sounds very unique that you have music out there along with you tying with the visual and also people just opening up to um, what you're expressing, your feeling and everything else. And also there's another thing too about Professional Heartbreak. Uh, tell us about some of your uh, other songs in the album you like to uh, talk about. Sure, yeah. There's one song that is, um, I would classify it as kind of a space disco in, <laughs> stylistically. <laughs> so, you know, what, I, I had written some pretty um, dark lyrics that touch on like self-destructive behavior. And uh, I was collaborating with two of my friends uh, Taylor Sheckett and another artist called Sunrise Transparency, and they put together this beautiful, weird disco track, and they sent that to me to work with. And this was during the Black Lives Matter protest, like during the really hardcore part of that timeline. And um, while we were working on that, the lyrics began to morph, and the way that I sung the lyrics began to change. And it ended up being more of a commentary on the self-destructive behavior of this country, the United States, how it feels like sometimes one part of the body is attacking another part of the body and every, everyone loses, you know, everybody gets hurt. Um, and so that song is called Burn It Down. And I think for me, the, the core message of Burn It Down is that Maybe sometimes it's okay to kind of uh, start over and um, accept your losses, you know, and, and really think about if a huge, a bigger, more structural change. Mm hmm. And that sounds amazing too. Where can we find uh, Perpetual Heartbreak at? Um, the album you can pre order. Uh, you can see all of the various links associated with our album at perpetualheartbreak.com. Or you can learn about me at heyitsbao.com. And Bao is spelled B-A-O, like um, like that dumpling movie from a couple years ago. <laughs> oh, Bao, yeah. Or you think about a dog, Bao, wow, wow. <laughs> That's right. Uh, there's been a lot of uh, different interpretations of my name and pronunciations. And so um, <clears throat> I like to remind people to spell it B-A-O rather than, you know, uh, autocorrect will change it to B-O-A. <laughs> oh yeah, don't you love autocorrect where you type um you know, it, I'm gonna lose my you know <laughs> well I'm not gonna get into it. And would you like to uh play another one for us? Um that's actually all I have for you today, um on the guitar. Oh that's uh, fine. That's fine. Yeah, I think you might want to play a little more too, but um we got a few more minutes with uh Bao Bo and um find out what's coming up for him uh, with a great future. But first, listen to the Mike Wagner Show at the themikewagnershow.com, powered by Sonic Web Studios. Visit online at sonicwebstudios.com for all he needs. Look at a professional website without breaking your budget. Sonic Web Studios is the answer. Sonic Web Studios offers fast, affordable custom web designs that blow the competition away. Call today, 1-800-303-3960. That's 1-800-303-3960. Or email to support at sonicwebstudios.com. Mention the Mike Wagner Show. Get 20% off your first project. Sonic Web Studios, take your image to the next level. Also, the Mike Widener Show can be heard on the MikeWidenerShow.com. You can check our Facebook page at Facebook.com slash the Mike Widener Show. You can download and listen on Facebook, SoundCloud, Spreaker, Spotify, and iHeartRadio. Also on Anchor FM, Radio Public, iTunes, Google Play, over 25 podcast platforms. Take the Mike Widener Show with you on any mobile device. Subscribe to the Mike Widener Show on the YouTube channel. Also follow the Mike Widener Show on Instagram and Twitter today. We're here, singer, songwriter, musician, very creative, Bob Bo here on the Mike Widener Show. And just a couple of things here. And we're looking forward to uh, what you have. And what do you have planned for coming up in 2021 and beyond? What can we expect from you? Well, um, like I told you, I'm going to create a uh, few different series of video content. Um, you know, one of them was just talking about music making from the perspective of somebody who comes from the visual arts world. Uh, I'm going to throw a few things out there and see what catches on uh, as far as video concepts. But I'm... Um, uh, the reason I, I wasn't able to play another song for you is I'm setting up my music studio right now to actually accommodate video streaming as well as audio so that I can actually do um, more performances from there. Um, 2021, I would really, really love to work with a lot more creative talent in the music world and other um, 
types of talent, visual arts as well. And um, specifically, I'd love to work with the Asian American media uh, in terms of maybe score a movie or a short film mm. uh, and do more kind of motion picture related stuff. I had a chance to do that earlier uh, last year and it was a really great experience to work on a film and a, a, a small mobile game as well. Oh, wow. So um, that's definitely on my radar. And, uh, you know, if your uh, listeners want to look me up, I'd appreciate just randoms hitting me up. <laughs> oh, my gosh. You know, you mentioned about movie soundtracks. You've uh, been involved there just about in doing mobile games. Where is there some of your favorite movie soundtracks um, that you enjoyed or some of your favorite movies growing up? So my absolute favorite movie soundtrack was probably... Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind, which was um, scored by, composed by John Bryan, who is one of my favorite producers. John Bryan, um, I discovered uh, in the late 90s when he produced the first couple of Fiona Apple, Apple albums. And since then, everything he's put out from Eels to Mac Miller to his various soundtracks have just been exactly my vibe <laughs> <laughs> and i'm looking forward to what you got in terms of movie soundtracks mobile games and everything else i mean you're just being creative and expanding all over we love to have you back on and um give us more on that and uh, more of insight and who do you consider biggest influence in your career bob my biggest influence is probably my mother <laughs> she has always said hey if that's what you want to do i'm going to support you like, being an artist is scary, right? Most Asian parents want their child to do something more, um, with a lot more um, certainty, more stability. Right, but, I know what you mean. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and my mom said, that's what you're good at, that's what you're in love with, I'm going to work my butt off to give you what you need to make this happen. And so, she's my absolute hero, she's made all of this possible, and I'm, I'm very, very grateful. That is very amazing. You know, we love to have moms like yours. And <laughs> what, what, what's the best advice you can give to anybody at this point? Um, I think I'm going to recycle a, a piece of advice that I got from an old, old school producer called Trevor Beach. He told me when I was in my 20s, no one's going to help you unless you ask for help. <laughs> <laughs> and immediately after he told me that, I asked him if he can... Um, introduced me to his publishing company, and he did. <laughs> and they've helped me uh, ever since for the last over a decade. And so um, I, I think that's really great advice. I, I would love to help more people as well. And um, I think you just have to ask and be sincere and be express gratitude, I think. Mm -hmm. And I think that's the most important thing. Once again, Bob Bo here on the Mike Wagner Show. You've been very, absolutely fantastic. Thank you for your time. We look forward to having you back on soon. And once again, tell us about your upcoming projects, what's your website, how do people contact you, where can people uh, purchase or check out your music? Mike, thank you so much. I really appreciate you having me on and spending time with me. Um, my upcoming, well, my name is Bao, spelled B-A-O. You can find my website at heyitsbao.com. <clears throat> My upcoming album is called Perpetual Heartbreak, and you can find that at perpetualheartbreak.com. E either website will work. And um, it'll come out on October 9th. It's a 14-track album. It feels like a Michelle Gondry or a David Lynch movie with weird scenes stitched together, and um, it's, a, it's a cool, surreal experience. It sounds like it. Once again, Bao, a very big thank you for your time. You've been absolutely fantastic. Looking forward to having you again soon. Do us a favor. Keep us up to date. Love you back on in 2020 and beyond as well in 2021. You've been great. Just keep in touch. Love having you back. I absolutely will, Mike. Thank you so much.